A resin geode on a mirror. How beautiful is that? Let me show you how to build crystal clusters and I have so much more information to share with you in this one. Stay tuned. Hi everybody, Janet here and I'm starting a new project today. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I am going to be pouring on a mirror. I've had this mirror floating around my house for years now and anything that's sitting that long it deserves to get a new life. So we're going to try it um, and see how it goes. I built the frame for the mirror myself. Uh, bought some mold at the local hardware store and um, got a little help from my brother-in-law who he's a carpenter and so he made some really nice uh, mitered cuts for me and that's great. Um, and I decided that I'm going to make it a geode type of a mirror as well. So um, yeah, it's going to have lots of bling and I'm also going to be trying out a new resin. This is clear cast. It's a two part epoxy resin and um, yeah, it's really crystal clear. So I'm excited to give that a try. Let me take you off the tripod. There we go. So again, there's the uh, resin I'm going to try today. And because it's going to be a geode piece, I've got a lot of bling here. So uh, if you've seen my geode um, before, you know I like to use seed beads. So I've got some of that. We're going to go with some purples, some golds, and uh, yeah, we'll throw in some pinks maybe to lighten it up a little bit. This is a, a nice gold that I like from Art Tree Creations. It's a real pretty gold. So yeah, those are all the things we're going to throw in here. So uh, I'm also going to try, I'm going to move. Here we go. Heading over here. And I'm going to try um, making I did this the last time and I'm going to try actually placing these little beads here. Sorry about the lighting. Let's see if I can't get better lighting. No, I can't. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to try placing these um, crystals in these little silicone trays and I'm going to create some um, clusters with those and those will be part of this piece. So that's what we've got going on today. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start batching my resin and I like to measure it by weight. So I always start with my digital scale. It's on zero now, but I'm gonna be using the cup. So I'm gonna set that on there and then I'm gonna clear out my scale. And then I'm going to measure out my, my um, marks on my cup. So I'm going to fill this cup up. And I believe it's a 14 ounce cup. So I'm going to do 7 ounces of each part. And little drip here there. All right, so there's my seven. And I'm going to mark my cup right there. And I'm going to do another seven. So my total is 14. And mark it. And that's it. Now I can go back. That's uh, distilled water. And I just keep that there because I use it all the time. It goes back and forth. 
So I'm done with my scale and I'm going to clean out my cup, get the moisture out of there. But there's my, my marks. So pretty, pretty easy. And I'm going to fill those. So here's my, my resin, my part A and my part B. And uh, I use nitrile gloves. Uh, a lot of people can get allergic reactions from resin. So wearing good quality, well-fitting gloves is uh, very important. And I also have a mask that I'm going to wear. So I'm going to go get that. Ta-da! And I'm going to pop that on. And that means I'm not going to be talking because you won't be able to hear me. So I'm going to do a voiceover. So let me stop and start again. Okay, so I have my mask on and I'm ready to start mixing up my resin. Again, this is ClearCast 7000 uh, and it's from the Epoxy Resin Store. There's my code if you're interested in trying out their resin products. When I begin mixing my resin, I always start with Part B. Part B is the hardener component of the one-to-one mixture for resin and I always find that it's a little bit thinner. So the reason why I start with that is in my mind thinner up against the edge of my cup, the inside of my cup, is going to mix in easier with the thicker component. So you can see how this is thick coming out of the bottle. You might also notice that I did one of my little, uh, I cut a pour spout in my uh, foil top on the bottle. It gives me a little bit more control. I want to be very exact in my mixing measurements. And some of you might be wondering, well, why does she use water to mark off her measurements on a cup? The reason for that is I don't want to risk pouring resin all over my scale. I'm okay with water because I can mop that up with paper towels. If I accidentally drop my bottle of resin, that's going to mess up my scale. And I usually measure my resin over top of my studio tabletop, which is covered in plastic. So here I am using my popsicle stick, and I'm just going to scrape those sides, and I'm going to take my time I mixed it for approximately five minutes to ensure it's well done. Right, so resin is all mixed. It's very fluid. I like how there's not very many bubbles in here. It's a little bit on the loose side, but not too loose. I kind of like it. And, uh, just make sure I scrape my stick on the edge of my cup. And you know what? Let me show you guys just how clear this resin is. There's very few bubbles in it, too. But it is crystal clear. There you go. There's a good look down into the cup. Not many bubbles at all. That's excellent mixing of Part A and Part B. I'm liking this ClearCast 7000 a lot. And here I'm going to just fast forward through splitting it into the cups. And you can see I have a small amount. I'm using a paper cup for this one because I want to have a lot of control. I'm adding a Jacquard Luminaire, I believe it's called. It's one of their pearlescent colors. It's a liquid acrylic paint. Uh, I think the intended use is for on fabric. But I really like these paints. They um, just have this beautiful little pearl in it. But I'm trying to show you here in the cup what I'm looking at is I'm holding my stick up and looking at the transparency. Because I'm going to be pouring on a mirror, I don't want it to be transparent. I want it to be pretty intense. You have to watch your ratios because if you don't... Um, 
mix it properly, you can get into trouble. Make sure that you are using less than 10% of paint to your resin ratio. It's really important. Acrylics are a water-based paint, and if you don't respect that ratio, it's going to cause your resin to react in ways that you don't want it to, like it'll set up too quickly or it'll just turn into a hot mess right in the cup. Because I'm pouring on a mirror, I don't want this part to be transparent, so that's why I'm adding more color. And here I am pushing it up against the side of the cup to check on that. So again, this is that Jacquard's Lumineer, and it's their uh, pearlescent. Okay, now we're going to try out these Flowart uh, liquid pigments. And it's got a dropper head on there. And let me tell you, I was squeezing really hard on this bottle. And you can see these tiny little drips that I was getting out. So it's the first time I'm using this pigment. And I thought, okay, well, they have a really small hole in there. So there must be a good reason why it's coming out so slowly and when I mixed it up it really didn't color it too well so guess what I did I just ripped that little dropper cap right off because it this resin pigment is specially designed to use in an epoxy resin so I'm not concerned about you know too much of an issue with the ri with the ratio but I am concerned about how intense my color is. So pouring it straight out of the bottle, I got much better intensity of color to the effect that I wanted. Now one of the other things I noticed in this bottle, again, it's the first time I'm using it, so I actually um, did a little bit of stirring in there to try to mix that uh, resin a little bit better. And that helped a lot once I had that dropper tip off. You can see it's really making the resin that I'm going to be using for the black to be much more intense. And that's exactly what I wanted because, again, I want the areas that I'm pouring to be opaque. So having a dark pigment in there and having the intensity of the color is exactly what I'm looking for. And by Adding a little bit more, I got it exactly the way I wanted. And the last color that I'm going to mix up is the Art Tree Creations. This is one of their metallic powder pigments. I love their metallic powders. They're really great. Um, just so finely milled. And I know that looks like a lot of metallic powder on a stick. And I'm doing that on purpose. You can get away with less, but again, my concern is the intensity because I'm pouring on glass and on a mirror. I don't want it to be transparent. So I'm stirring this up really, really good and checking that against the lip of my cup. And when I see that it's still too transparent, I dump a little bit more metallic powder in there. And then again, I'm just checking that looking through and get look, checking it against the light, and I like what I see, so let's use that. Over here on my drawing table, I have a silicone baker's mold, and I'm going to use this to build my clusters of crystals. These are um, semi-precious quartz, I believe they call them amber luster that I got from Michaels and there's the reason why I put the resin in a paper cup. Look at that sweet little pour spout. So I'm just adding a little bit of puddle of the purple into each one of these little silicone cups and we're gonna let that sit for just a little bit so that it can thicken up too. While those little purple puddles start to set up in the uh, silicone mold. We're going to start pouring here on the mirror. Now, again, the mirror is framed with a wood frame that 
um, I made with my brother-in-law. And the back of the mirror is, it's mounted on a piece of wood. So I gave this a lot of thought. I've seen a lot of people have issues with pouring on glass and the glass breaking. This is a old mirror. Again, I've had it around for a long time. It's a very heavy piece of glass. And again, it is mounted on a piece of wood. It is glued and completely attached to that piece of wood. So I have no worries about this breaking or um, a reaction to the resin because it has the stability of that wood back. Now, all that said, I'm going to be very careful when I apply heat. Um, because that could really be an issue. The glass is going to heat up at a different rate than the resin. So I'm going to be real careful with that. Right now, I'm just pouring out the gold and the black. I'm pouring them both at the same time, taking my time working around. You can see I got a little bit of black there on the edge, but I'll clean that up. And I'm going to um, just keep moving around the board here. I want the black and the gold to interact with one another. So that's why I'm pouring them both at the same time. You'll get a little bit of bleed over between those colors and it gives some nice effects. And that's exactly what I want going on. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of, I haven't laid anything out. There's no um, little damn lines that I built like I've done in other geode pieces. I'm just free forming this the whole time and it worked very nicely. I was real pleased with how this all set up. So this is pretty much going to be my process. I'm going to be pouring out a band of black or gold and then coming back in and pouring out a band or a puddle of the gold and I just kept working all around the board. You can see the resin is still very fluid I've had it batched now for about 20 minutes, so it's uh, really flowing well. And these paper cups really give you a lot of control. So if you're trying to work in small areas, give that a try. They, they might help you if you're trying to get a little bit more detail. Because this is a 24 by 24 inch uh, mirror, it was really hard for me to get any good detail shots. I tried to put an angle there that I could get a lot, but uh, yeah, I apologize for that. But uh, you know, we do the best we can. I'm going to make some ring barriers now with the gold also. And that's because I'm planning on doing some pools with the purple that I can have those crystals laid out into. I'm going to use my heat gun to pop the bubbles. I did not use a torch at all. All right, moving along with the project. We're back at my drawing table. And it's been about an hour since I poured these puddles into the silicone molds. And now it's sticky. So there's a lot better chance that my crystals are going to stay in the positions that I place them in. One of the nice things about using the silicone mold is that the sides give me an opportunity to prop these crystals up. I am looking for areas on the crystals that lend themselves to helping the crystal stand. And I'm also leaning them against the side of the mold and against one another and making sure that they're not going to move around a little bit because the idea is then to leave them in these molds to cure overnight. That way, when I go to demold them, I'll have these nice little crystal stands and I'll be able to incorporate those into the areas of my mirror geode and should work well. So let's just finish up. I take my time. Like I said, I'm looking for the best side. Now, yeah, I don't have my gloves on here, but I'm being very careful and placing those in. 
You can see that one slipped around a little bit on me, but that's okay. I'm going to let it do its thing. I'm not going to stick my hands in the resin. <laughs> and if I don't like it, then I'll go get some gloves on and maybe a popsicle stick and I'll change it around. But this worked really well. So I got this uh, silicone mold. I think it was on Amazon. Really inexpensive. Uh, you can see it's got a shiny... Um, surface to it and you want to make sure that you get something that has a shiny surface not a matte finish here we are the next day and uh, I think you can see in that little cup there my crystals all slid and fell down but that's all right because you know you got to do things differently so let's pop these out of here the resins all cured and there we have one so it looks pretty good all right nice that's the worst one so let's see how some of these did. Now, I don't care if it's not a perfect round or anything because I'm going to be placing these into the resin that I'm going to pour. So I'm basically just looking, I was looking to use the sides of these molds to kind of hold the points up, which definitely happened in this one. So I'm happy with that one. I'll probably get my Dremel out because you can see, I think you can see. Let's try to get it there. See how it's a little, little uh, thick. So if I Dremel that down, I'm not going to have that noticeable on my piece, right? And uh, it'll just disappear into the pore because my pour is going to be this purple color. All right, so that one looks good. Happy with that. This one looks nice. Pop that one out. And again, these are standing up pretty high, but I have more of these crystal points, so I'll be clustering some pieces right in amongst them. But look at that. That's a, put it on the white background for you. Looks good, huh? Yeah. Nice. All right. And, you know, they can't all be the same. So you got to use a different number of pieces. Again, another good one. I got these uh, silicone molds off of Amazon. <clears throat> they're really pretty cheap, and I'm very pleased at how they're holding up to, uh, to use. You can see it comes out perfectly clean in there. No residue left, no uh, purple markings. I like that. So, there's my last one. You can see I got a little bit of resin up on the edge <clears throat> of the mold, but that's okay. Again, I'll get my Dremel and Dremel that down. Because like here, see how nice that'll just fade right into what I pour for the new resin. So I'm real pleased with that. All right, so let's get these cleaned up and uh, see what we're going to do with them on the board. All right. I like them. Cute. All right. Well, there are those beautiful little points. So I'm going to just grab a couple just for, you know, playing around. They're cute, huh? I like that color on the purple. It's nice. So, 
uh, check out the shirt. It is a uh, Halloween present for me. You guys read it? Any uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show fans? I am. So, uh, okay. Enough of that silliness. Silly, silly. So, let's go see how the pour went yesterday. Ooh. All right, let's get over here and check out what's happening. So, I'm going to spin you guys around. Okay, so everything is cured. It's the next day. And yeah, let's get some close up details on this mirror here. I'm sure it's kind of looks kind of weird to you guys looking at the reflection of my ceiling up there. But uh, the black and the gold are always just such a classic combination. It looks great. All right. I don't want to blind you with my spotlights. So what my idea is is to, you know, use these points in these for the clusters. I am blinding you with that light. Okay. And uh, so that'll be the cluster that starts the center of the geodes. And, uh, you know, I got a, a few of these. So that's the idea. And then, uh, again, building points around. All right. So that's the idea, and we'll play with that, okay? So we're going to be doing some more pouring, and uh, let's see how this project moves along. All right. Hi, I'm outside, and the weather's getting colder, and sorry now because I have a neighbor who's getting a tree cut down, but I am going to be working on these. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so I'm going to dremel down these edges. There. So you can see that lip there. That's what I'm going to be taking down. So I thought I'd bring you guys outside and. Uh, couple of things I wanted to just talk to you about real quick is so yeah I got really long hair and um, when I use the Dremel I'm going to be creating dust from uh, the resin and I do not want to inhale it and I uh, try to be cautious around it so I'm going to tie my hair up or clip it up whatever you want to say I'm doing here. So I'm going to clip that up, keep that out of the way, and uh, I've got my dust mask. Oh, that's not me, that's the neighbor's chainsaw. And um, I have gloves. I'm going to put those on. I've got some glasses in case anything pops up. And then this is, uh, this is my Dremel and I put it inside a sock and I'll tell you why because this dust gets all over the place and it goes inside the vents here on my Dremel and not good for the Dremel so the sock works good it keeps it uh, keeps the dust from getting sucked into the motor of the Dremel. It I rubber banded down at the tip so it keeps it out of my way. I can operate the switches. Yep. <laughs> and, oh, that's a good hair look. Um, so it works good and it makes my Dremel tool last longer. So. That's my hot tip. Get an old tube sock and cover up your Dremel. 
and it'll last longer. So let's uh, get going on doing this job. Okay, all my safety equipment is on, mask, gloves, glasses. I have the sock on my Dremel. I'm going to switch that on and we're going to start working around the uh, clusters that I made with the crystals. So I'm going to try to hold the Dremel as steady as possible and I want to be very careful with that tip not to bump into those crystal clusters. It's a, it's a um, drum type attachment that you put on the Dremel and it's a piece of sandpaper essentially. So that's spinning around at a very high revolution and if it comes in contact with these crystal clusters it's going to leave a scar on them. So I don't want to do that. I'm trying to be very careful, hold things real steady and I'm just going to keep working around until I feel like I have it trimmed up. You can see my little puppy dog back there. He's a clown. He loves to play. So let's get this done. A lot of dust flying about. Again, that's why I wear the mask and do it outside. Don't try to get away with doing it in your house. You'll regret that. You want to have good ventilation and like I said, Good safety equipment on. I'll put a link for the Dremel in the description of the video for you guys. So we're ready to start with our fun stuff. I'm going to begin with a Pearlex pigment powder. This is called Reflex Violet. It's got some really neat effects in it. Um, and I'm also using a plastic pipette. And this is giving me a lot of control because in this spot here, I'm going right up against that gold ring. And I wanted to take my time and be really careful that I'm not overlapping onto that rose gold from Art Tree Creations. So the pipette is allowing me so much control that I'm really having it, it's slow <laughs> but it gives me a lot of control and the ability to place this ring of the Perlex um, reflex violet exactly where I want it. The other reason why this is working so nicely in the pipette is due to the resin itself. Again I'm still using that ClearCast 7000 and it has a very fluid state, so using a pipette, it works well. And along with the modern invention of video and video editing, I can do time lapse here and speed up the process. We're just going to keep going around the mirror, adding these rings of purple. And uh, it goes pretty quickly. I want to keep those clusters that I built out of the way. I'm not ready to get any resin on them yet and I'm just going to keep flowing this out. I did this process with the pipettes for about 15 minutes and the resin just kept flowing really nicely. And the next ring up we have Liquitex acrylic ink. This is dioxazine purple, and I mixed in some of uh, some chunky glitter in a hexagon shape from Creatology. Then we're going to use Black Diamonds Liquid Fire. This is a yummy color too, guys. And I'm using that paper cup method with the pinch spout, and it's working great. I can move a little bit quicker than I did with the pipettes. Okay, we're going to slow things down a little bit here in the video. So now I'm getting ready to add those crystal clusters. I mixed up some more of the resin with the uh, Jacquard Lumineer Purple Pearl. And it's the same color I use to build my clusters. And I'm just going to place that piece right into that puddle I just poured out. And I kind of swirl it around a little bit to try to get it to embed. I want resin on the bottom. 
because that's what's going to hold it to the glass. But I also want to kind of create a, that, allow that resin to build up over the edges of that. And I go back in with my popsicle stick and I very carefully just make sure that I'm covering up the edges, getting a nice clean look. The resin is starting to flow. This puddle, I, you know, probably overfilled it a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> it got some nice effects in there. And again, just go carefully, adding in, look carefully, make sure you cover up the edges with the resin. Once it's covered, it's going to just disappear. And we're going to just do the same thing in all these puddles, a little bit in, drop on the cluster swirl it in there and keep moving around the mirror here's a close-up for you try to get a little bit better angle again i'm just going to pour out that little puddle matches the same color that i used for building the clusters all right and then we're just gonna make sure we get resin completely on the bottom. Sorry, my big fat hand got in the way. I am a righty. And then I'll just use the stick to make sure that all those edges are covered up. Last one back here. All right. These look so nice. I'm really happy how the clusters turned out. And I'm just going to go back and using the same colors that I had mixed up previously, I'm just going to continue to build rings in whatever sequence I feel like doing. No rhyme or reason there. Just going to load them all up. Just like that. Looks good. Okay. So my world is not perfect. I don't know anybody's that is. You can see I had a little drip of resin got into a spot that I didn't want. So I'm using a clean paper towel, wiping up as much as I can. Then I put some 91% alcohol on the paper towel and I wipe it again and poof, it's gone. That's how you can fix any messes. I think earlier in the video, I had gotten a little bit on, of black on the edge, and that's exactly how I got it off there as well. Works good. Okay, all the puddles are done. I'm just using the heat gun. Not on a very high heat. I'm just going around. This resin is thin, so the bubbles are barely there. And just using the heat gun is all I need. All right, time to get some bling on. This is uh, seed beads, and they're just a gold, little bit of reflectiveness to them, but they're glass beads, and uh, mix them right into the resin, and then I'm using a pop stick to carefully place them, so I'm creating a ring with these seed beads. And yes, it's tedious. Uh, to do all the rings in the seed beads, it took me about an hour. So it's pretty labor intensive. It's a labor of love. And uh, yeah, I think it's well worth it. I like the way they uh, sparkle. And uh, they definitely add dimension because it's building another ridge on these pools of resin. So. I think it's de definitely well worth it, and uh, just take some time, that's all. And yet another ring. Following around that gold edge, I wanted to have a very transparent ring of the dioxazine. Um, this is again the Liquitex acrylic ink and a little bit of glitter in there just to finish that ring off. Looks great. Okay, so I decided that I, you know, I'm trying to keep mirrored areas open. And I have 
a really nice look with a translucent. Can you see the shadow there? Um, that's a very transparent purple made with um, Liquitex acrylic ink. It's great for giving you control. Very minimal amount of pigment needed. I've got some glitter added in there for bling because, you know, geodes are all about the bling. Why not? And so what I did was I added a little drip there. I added a pour, a ring of my gold and I have a couple more pieces of the clusters of crystals made up and ready to go. They're just small little ones, so I'm going to be setting those in those little puddles that I made. And it's going to take just a very minimal amount. And let's do it. Okay, just like we did before, the same color for the rings, and we're going to build them in real quick here and place some more crystals in them. Didn't take much resin for this time, but you know, I'm just tweaking it a little bit, trying to make it perfect as best I can. Okay. And then we'll just drop those clusters of crystals in there. Place them nicely. And I don't want to mess it up, so I'm only using a flame torch for just a little bit of heat on there to get those tiny bubbles out, get the resin to move a little bit and blend. Here's a little bit of a close-up. You can see I did get a drip of uh, resin, kind of went rogue there, but I'll clean that up just like I did before putting uh, some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and wipe that up. Let's drop this cluster of crystals in. They're so pretty. Really liking this piece. You guys are enjoying the process. It's a long one, huh? Yep, and just add a few loose crystals here and there where I feel like it needs a little bit more attention. Okay, we'll let this cure overnight. See you then. Okay, the final day working on this mirror geode. And boy, is it pretty. The lines are so easy to put in. There's no rhyme or reason to them. You just kind of go around and put them wherever you feel like it. If you have a spot that you want to accentuate or you want to draw your eye to it, just add a couple of rings in there. I like to use the CraftSmart markers. I get those at Michael's. They're oil-based. And I also use the, the uh, Posca pens. They work really well. Um, I use the medium tip, and that seems to cover all my bases for me. They come in many different widths also. They have the uh, fine tip, the medium tip, and the wide chisel tips. But they're all good. Here it is. Gilded Geode Mirror. I am so happy with this artwork. The resin was fantastic to work with. Check it out online, go to the website. This was the ClearCast 7000 that made this piece possible. I just love every bit of it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I taught you something. If you're trying geodes, it's a lot of fun. And I hope you're interested in checking out this piece on my website at mooncusserart.com. And don't forget, I need you guys to subscribe and check out my videos. It helps me keep being able to bring more information to you. I can't do it without you, and I love hearing from you. Have a great day, guys. Thanks so much, and see you next time.